Hey, what's going on, soulmates? I thought I'd hit you guys up with some thoughts about the new Harley Quinn Birds of Prey DC Multiverse figure by McFarlane Toys. And you know what? I gotta say that I was initially excited when I saw this figure, but then I took a few minutes to really look at it because sometimes I'll get really excited about a figure. You guys know the feeling like you'll get really excited when you first see a figure after it's announced, but then you'll look at it for a while and you'll just realize, hey, wait a second here and that's exactly where i was because initially i was giddy as a schoolgirl about harley quinn from birds of prey because i don't know about you guys but i love that birds of prey movie i thought it was great i love the characters i have nothing bad to say about the movie the only thing that i do wish they had in birds of prey was poison ivy that is literally the most disappointing thing about it. I really wanted me some Harley and Poison Ivy action. Oh, that would have made the movie just... <clears throat> but anyway, amid all the Suicide Squad excitement, there's a new Harley Quinn figure that's been announced, and everyone thought it was cancelled, but apparently now it's up for pre-order. It's Harley Quinn from Birds of Prey in her golden overalls look. And like I say, I was initially really excited for this figure, but then I looked a little closer, and I looked at her face, and my heart sank. Because, oh my god, that face is not Harley Quinn. That is not Margot Robbie's face. No, 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 no. I don't know what face this is supposed to be, but this is not her. This is crap. What is this? What, what? Have you guys noticed this recently? I've actually noticed the same thing about all of McFarlane Toys movie toys. If you look at the Batman toy from the Justice figure line, Batman Unmasked, it doesn't look anything like Ben Affleck, and then you look at Unmasked Suicide Squad members, Harley Quinn doesn't look like Harley Quinn, Bloodsport doesn't look like Bloodsport, and then the only one that even remotely looks like the actor that portrays the character is Peacemaker. That one at least looks a little bit like John Cena. But all these other figures, what the hell is going on here? Is it just that McFarlane Toys can't secure the rights to make a likeness of the actors, so he's just doing half-assed versions of melted cheese faces to compensate for the fact that he can't get these actors to come and get their faces scanned or some bullshit? I don't know, man, but these figures that they're doing really look like crap. These figures look good from far away, which is how I see most of them when I see them for the first time. But when you really look up close and you get a good eyeful of them, that's when they all fall apart. It's just like the car from Pulp Fiction. From far away, Jules and Vincent's car passes the muster. But when you get up close, suddenly you see all of Marvin's head splattered all over the damn thing. That's what it's like with these figures. When you go up close to these faces, you realize, what the fuck? And this doesn't look anything like Marco Roby, and the tattoo on her just looks too big, too. I mean, it covers like half her goddamn jaw. It's ridiculous. It's... <laughs> oh, my God. Like I say, everything else about this figure looks pretty good. Like, it comes with a nice mallet, which is a great accessory for her. Her look is awesome, the, the head sculpt otherwise looks pretty decent, and everything else, I got nothing to complain about about this figure, because it's just so good otherwise. But then you give me this head sculpt and I just gotta throw it away, because it ain't right. It is so important to get the fucking likeness for a movie figure. If Kenner could manage it with the goddamn Dark Knight collection back in 19-fucking-90, you can manage it now in 2021, brother. You can do it. Seriously, go look at the Dark Knight collection from Kenner back in 19 goddamn 90. They made a figure that's the spitting fucking likeness of Michael Keaton. 1990, back when they didn't have, you know, scanning tech and all that bullshit. They had to make that by hand. But then McFarlane comes along and he can't make a figure that looks like the actors. Ho 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 ho. Boy, toys sure have gotten better, haven't they? No, no, no. I am actually really confident that McFarlane can make a good head sculpt. It's just, I have a feeling it has something to do with securing the rights. I don't know, man. There's a lot of bullshit that seems to go along with making DC toys or anything DC related. Why does it seem like it's so much easier for Marvel stuff to come out and have Marvel having 
good head sculpts and good designs and all that. Whereas with DC, it seems to be all kinds of legal bullshit that they gotta jump through to make things happen. I don't know, what's the deal with that? I mean, doesn't Warner Brothers own DC? What's the fucking hold up here? What, what's going on, man? And let me tell you something else about DC of late. It is complete and utter bullshit that you cannot include guns with their toys anymore. Because some stupid jack-off in his ivory tower over at Warner Brothers decided it would be a swell idea to not promote guns for the toys anymore, even though, even though, in the new Suicide Squad line, we've got two characters, Peacemaker and Bloodsport, who both, guess what, use guns as their main weapons. They use melee weapons, sure, but guess what they use most often? Guns. So yeah, you could say I'm a little miffed about that. Not that it really concerns Harley Quinn here, but you know, I got a bone to pick with that bullshit over there. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Warner Brothers. You stupid fucking jack-offs. Why do they always make the worst decisions possible? What was it with Warner Brothers? Does everyone in charge over at Warner Brothers just have collectively a hole in the head? Do they all sniff their farts at lunchtime or some shit? What's going on over there in those offices, man? I would be willing to bet that no WB exec has ever read a DC comic book of any kind and is completely ignorant of every DC character in that vast portfolio of characters. Well, back to Harley Quinn here, I want to talk a little bit about the joints on her, specifically the wrist and ankle joints. I don't know what it is about McFarlane toys and these wrist and ankle joints, because when you look at the figure, it looks like he's doing his best to hide the articulation on the figure. I mean, look at it. He's covering the torso with plastic at the bottom of it to try to hide the hips, right? And it looks like a few other areas are hiding articulation too, like he uses shirts to hide the torso articulation and stuff. But then, you know, the elbow articulation is in full view, so there's nothing he can do about that. But then you get these wrists and these ankles that really stick out. It is really obvious. And I'm kind of wondering why he went with ball-jointed wrists and ankles when he's kind of obviously trying to hide the articulation elsewhere because, uh, you're not fooling anybody there with them joints there, McFarlane. <laughs> I mean, oh, it's just so disappointing looking at this figure. I really, really want it, actually, but I am so disappointed by the head sculpt that I just gotta give it a no. I'm actually not sure if there are plans to release any more Birds of Prey toys, but I would love to see Huntress. I would love to see Renee Montoya. I would love to see Cassandra Cain, even. I would love to see Black Mask and Victor Zaz. Black Mask and Victor Zaz. Those gotta be like my most wanted of the line besides Harley Quinn herself. Oh, a guy can dream, right? Even though it probably isn't gonna happen. And of course, my most, most, most wanted figure of all is a Harley Quinn with an accurate head sculpt. Be sure you subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it's released. If you want to hang out with me and my other soulmates, I stream Sunday through Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be back again soon with some more thoughts about some new releases. And until then, with love for me to you, bye bye